coming soon to a theater near me. See a giant chicken salad sandwich attack New York City. Scream in terror as Frankie Avalon sings the title song. The screen veritably cracks with tension over such scenes as... Oh, no, Harold! What is it? It's a stop sign, Shirley. Oh! Just some of the thrilling moments you'll experience in Norman Goyerson's The Eraser That Rubbed Out Louisville. Now playing with Mickey Rooney as a selected short subject. Hi. This is your daytime sleepy gal telling all you big, strong, handsome men out there that I really go for guys who use Kremens brand corn plasters and bunion removers. Hello. This is Anna Maria Albagetti. I want to thank you for playing my Rex. As a special guest, we have the only man who ever sat on the electric chair, received a charge of 100,000 volts, and lived through it. Tell me, sir, how do you feel now? Well, I feel fine, but I talk with a little static. Hi there, adventure fans. This is your famous world traveler, Bud Valise. Today, our travel film was taken by our guest, Mr. Jim Freeby. Let's see that film, huh, Jim? Oh, well, Bud, recently I took my family on a gourmet's guide of America to sample the varied foods of regional locales. Uh -huh. and, uh, this uh, first scene is a restaurant in Pepperstone, Ohio. Good food, Jim? Oh, great, great. Yeah, we had a jumbo burger with French fries and coleslaw I there. see. Uh, oh, here's a familiar sight. Yeah, oh, yeah, that is a uh, romantic southern Illinois there. We had one of their famous cheeseburgers with fries and a slice of Polish pickle and a frozen dairy delight. Was I see. Nice. And uh, this scene here, Jim? Yeah. Well, this is the famous Buddy's Dry Mouth Burger of Tumacary, New Mexico. The fries were great there. And, and they serve a marvelous relish on their burgers. I see. Well, it sounds like a thrilling trip, Jim. Well, you know, you can't beat regional food for broadening your horizon. Right, right. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, flora and fauna, this is Bud saying... We had our stomachs pumped 12 times. So long. Now it's time for today's visit with a story lady. Today's story is one that I call The Frog Prince. And it goes something like this. Once upon a time, in a kingdom far away, an evil witch put a curse on a handsome young prince and turned him into a frog, telling him that he would remain a frog until a beautiful princess came along and gave him a kiss. Many years passed, and then one day, a lovely princess was skipping gaily along in the garden of her castle near a pond. All of a sudden, she spied a frog on a lily pad. Oh, what a cute little froggy, she exclaimed. And with that, she picked up the frog and gave it a kiss. Instantly, she got a whole bunch of warts on her lips. Thank you, story lady. Be listening next time, boys and girls, when the story lady tells the heartwarming story of the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. And now, a scene from another classic motion picture. This time, the great World War II epic, Battle of the Bilge. You know something, Dave? Yeah, Arnie? I can't wait to get out of this chicken outfit. Well, why's that, Arnie? Well, for one thing, the feathers keep sticking to my armpits, and this dumb beak makes it hard to talk. Oh. Hi, this is Frank Sinatra. Thanks for playing all my records. And now, our next request time guest is Miss Lucy Ann Jab of Dieterville, Indiana. <laughs> Miss Jab, suppose you tell us what you're requesting this morning. I heard about a man in Cran, Nebraska, who can play how low young lovers on the carburetor of a 1933 Chrysler Airflow. And I'd like very much if you'd present him for us here on your show. Well, I'm sorry, Miss Jab. We can't do it. <laughs> However, Miss Jab, we do have in our studio a gentleman all the way from Morton Springs, Utah, who can play Remember Pearl Harbor on the exhaust manifold of a 1954 Henry J. Will he do, Miss Jab? Well, no, he won't. Very well, then. I'm terribly sorry. That's all the show for today. <laughs> From
From the pages of literary masterpieces, we present Robert Louis Stevenson's classic tale of horror, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Where is it? Where is it? I've got to find it before it's too late. What did I do with it? Ah, there. Ah, I knew I'd find it. Now I'll mix the ingredients and drink it down. <laughs> Everybody loves somebody sometime. Everybody falls in love somehow. And now it's time for Maxwell of the Royal Peruvian Marine. As we join Colonel Maxwell today, his loyal and trustworthy companion, little 11 year old Jimmy Helpful, is telling the Colonel about a startling find. Listen. Colonel, a startling find is a small tropical bird. Good work, Jimmy. And if a certain Mr. Manuel Defia thinks he's going to put one over on us, he's barking up the wrong shin. Colonel Maxwell, look out! <laughs> oh! Gosh, Colonel Maxwell, somebody threw a rock through the window. Good work, Jimmy. But how do you know? Well, gosh, Colonel, the window is broken, and there's a huge boulder on the floor there at your feet where it landed after it hit you in the eye. Yes, so there it is. Good work, Jimmy. Thanks. Well, they play rough, don't they? Who's that, Colonel? The Green Bay Packers. Oh, yes, Colonel, they do. Now, let's have a look at this rock, shall we? Hmm. Well... What kind is it, Colonel? It's quartz, Jimmy. Quartz? Good. Let's have a drink. Well, don't mind if I do. Well, Jimmy, cheers. Certainly, Colonel. Ruh, ruh, ruh. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. You've just suffered through Maxwell of the Royal Peruvian Marines. Our hidden microphones take us to a typical state function at a typical French palace. Mademoiselle, I have been admiring you from across the room all evening. Permit me to introduce myself. I am Count Antoine de Alemaine. Oh, Count, what a pleasure it is to meet a man of fine breeding and manners. Thank you. Uh, do you mind if I smoke? This is the offstage announcer telling you that for their size, elephants don't really smell bad. Now, back to the records. Exter here with my first ulcer and a special guest who is Lloyd Menchik, the first man to cross the equator on a pair of toe shoes. Uh, wasn't that difficult, Mr. Menchik? Oh, not really, boy, if you've got them on good and tight. You know, them ribbons do come untied, you know. Exactly how did you cross the equator on toe shoes? Well, I was balanced on a high wire. A wire? Yeah, certainly. Otherwise, I would have fell on the water. Well, what was the wire attached to? Well, one end was attached to Australia. That's amazing. Oh, not really, if you use an overhand loop knot. Uh, that way it don't slip. And the other end of the wire, what was that attached to? Uh, nothing. I held it in my right hand and took up the slack as I went. That's fantastic. Uh, could you demonstrate that technique? Yeah, sure. I got my wire with me. I'll tie one end to the knob on this door. I'll just hold the other end as high as I can above my head and start walking on a wire. I guess it don't work inside. Well, thank you anyway. Uh, thank you, Boyd. Uh, this is Boyd Poindexter returning you to our main studio. Believe it or don't. Believe it or don't. Harold Kammerstern of Trippin Falls, Utah, has watched the TV show What's My Line for 237 consecutive Sundays and still does not know what John Daly does for a living. <laughs> nice night on the highway tonight. Sure is. I just wish this cigarette of mine was half as nice. Oh, well, here, try one of mine. Brills, huh? Right. Hey, this is a filter cigarette with real tobacco taste. Yeah, but I'm I'm getting a little tired of them. Oh, here, try one of mine. Connors, huh? Mm-hmm. Say, this is real downright tobacco pleasure. And without the filter, unlike the brill which you gave me, which has the filter that offers real tobacco taste. Yeah, but this gives you real tobacco pleasure without filtering out any of the taste. Well, from now on, instead of the Carners I gave to you, it's Brills for me. And instead of the Brills I gave to you, it's Carners for me. Carners taste great. Carners taste great. Carners taste great. And Brills taste great. Hi, this is Jerry Cosgrove about to ask passers-by today's question, which is, what do you think of the present trends in women's fashion? Here comes a likely-looking gentleman. 
Uh, sir, may I have your name, please? Stick him up. Huh? Give me your watch. Uh, but I, 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 and your wallet. Uh, but I, uh, and I'll take that wire you're carrying there. It's time again for another page in the Crime Stopper's notebook. The con man is an unscrupulous villain who steals your hard-earned money by cleverness rather than violence. Each of us, at this moment, probably is involved with some form of con man without knowing it. If you want to truly protect yourself, simply send me a self-addressed stamped envelope along with $750 to Crime Stopper's Notebook, care of Fred's Diner, Twin Forks, Oklahoma. Now, see the movie they're all talking about, Spaghetti Italian Style. Yes, Spaghetti Italian Style. Produced by Mario Provoloni in association with Hakusai Saito Studios of Tokyo. A Franco-Svenska production under the direction of Anglo-Deutsches Industries Limited. Spaghetti Italian style is distributed by the Pan-Arabian Division of the Israeli Film Amalgamation through arrangements with the Lithuanian Bank of Switzerland. Filmed in glorious Slovak color on the windswept plains of North Africa with the Spanish army and a Turkish crew. It's a film you won't want to miss. Spaghetti Italian style. The warm-hearted story of a boy and his dog coming of age in Westport, Connecticut. We switch you now through the miracle of sound reproduction to one of the most thrilling moments of courage in our Navy's history. Take her down, Matthews. But, Captain, do you think it's wise? If we want to win this war, we must show the enemy the kind of defiance that will make him respect us. So take her down. But, Captain, this is a destroyer. A destroyer. Take her up! Take her up! It's time now, boys and girls, for another adventure with Balloon Man. Yes, Balloon Man, that jolly foe of public enemies. As we look in today, Balloon Man is chatting with beautiful, seductive Linda Pinknam. I'm just fascinated by you, Balloon Man. You're so round and cuddly and fearless. What's this funny little old string around your nose? Don't touch that string! <laughs> Tune in next time, boys and girls, for the exciting adventures of Bladder Man, son of Balloon Man. And now, boys and girls, it's time for another trip through make-believe land with the Story Lady. There once was an emperor who thought of nothing but new clothes. One day, a tailor told the emperor that he could make beautiful clothes for him that stupid people would not be able to see. The tailor then collected a bunch of money and only pretended to make clothes for the emperor. When the make-believe clothes were finished, the emperor put them on and paraded through the city. And everybody pretended that they could see the clothes, except for one person, Hugh Hefner, who asked the emperor to be the playmate of the month, which he agreed to and enjoyed very much, except for the staples in his tummy, which hurt a lot. Thank you, story lady. Next time, boys and girls, the story lady will tell us how to check and raise when playing stud poker. This program is being brought to you by Garcia's Guacamole, the dual-purpose avocado cream, good for eating and shining green shoes with. Dexter here with the hives, and another special guest who is Mr. Sidney Marcuso, president of Gamblers Anonymous, the organization dedicated to the rehabilitation of compulsive gamblers. Welcome to the show again, Mr. Marcuso. What do you mean again? I believe you were my guest several months ago. No, 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 no. This is the first time. I'm sure you were here before. Fifty bucks says I wasn't. This is Boyd Poindexter returning you... I'll give you eight to five. ...to our main studio. Now, another scene from a classic film. This time, the famous western, Chopped Rawhide. I'm a-calling you out. Just name the time, Sidewinder. Tomorrow morning, daybreak. Daybreak? You mean like six? What about 7.30, yellow belly? I don't get up before 10. 
Got a gunfight at 10.15. How about 11? Booked up solid. How's tomorrow afternoon? Can't squeeze you in till after six, I'd wind uh, I don't go much for night gunfights. Me neither. Maybe some other time, yellow belly. Sure. Have your secretary give me a call when you're free. I'll do that. Through the miracle of science, we take you back to the year 1216 A.D. in Old England in an attempt to make history live again. Stop! Oh, no. Robin Hood. That's right, my dear Duke of Cornwall. Now hand me that box of gold or my arrow shall find its way into your black heart. Here. Don't kill me, Robin Hood. Aha! And once more, Robin Hood robs from the rich. My entire fortune. Gone. I'm destitute. You mean you're broke? Completely. Well, listen. Take this box of gold. I give all I steal to the poor. Oh, thank you, Robin Hood. Now, hand me that box of gold. Okay, here. But I'm poor again. Then here it is right back. And back to you. Take it back. Thank you. Now, give me it again. And back to you. Now, give me it again. Back to you. Now, give me it again. And back to you. Give me that again. Mom, oh, Mom, I'm home. Look, Ma, no cavities. Oh, you bust in here like that one more time, you rotten little brat, and I'll really belt you. How many times do I have to tell you? You live next door, next door. Darn tracked houses. Now, once again, welcome to Waltz Time. <laughs> Uh, what time you got, Walt? Uh, it's 7.32. Thanks, Walt. You've been listening to Walt's Time. Astrological Forecast. If you were born under the sign of Scorpio, October 22nd to November 22nd, you will be stopped by a traffic policeman because you were driving on a one-way street. When this happens, you will explain to him that you were only driving one way, and he will then pistol-whip you for being a smart mouth. And now, today's chapter of The Treadmill of Life. As we join our story today, Dr. Whitcomb has just come out of the operating room. Sandra, I'm afraid to report... I have some bad news. Well, just how bad will that news be? We'll find out in the next dramatic episode of The Treadmill of Life. Today's installment of The Treadmill of Life was written by Arnold Fredericks, Osborne Tucker, and Shepard Flanders. Special material by Wilton Pasternak, Seymour Gibbons, and James T. Baxes. Additional dialogue by Abner Haskell, David Emerson, David Pollock, and Elias Davis. Script supervision by Edward L. Carter, Franklin Hill, Dean Stapleton, and Martin Tracy. Research editors by Conway, Lorne Braddock, and Steve Miller. Closing credits written by Terence Walling, Zeke Edwards, Arnold Shapiro, and Zachariah Costello. This is Charles Dietrich. And Randolph Collins signing off for the entire Treadmill of Life staff. You are now about to hear... Five episodes from a daily feature called Return to Paper Plates. These specific examples are not in sequence, and so there will be a rather obvious gap in the storyline, which does continue from day to day, but doesn't make much sense anyway. So we felt there was no need for it here. Thank you. Now, WIBG presents the seemingly endless story of Return to Paper Plates. Remember last time, Jack Linehan, who plays the part of Carl Morgan on this program, failed to stop by the station's mimeographing department to pick up the scripts for that show. Well, needless to say, Harriet Greer, who portrays Julia Fairholm, was furious. And instead of our hearing a regular, fictionalized episode of Return to Paper Plates, a dramatic, real-life, on-the-air argument ensued between the members of the cast. Well, today, Carl Morgan now played by Earl Treadwell, who replaced Jack Linehan, who was fired, is seated in the study of the Fairholme apartment, talking to Julia, as still portrayed by Harriet Greer, whose real-life father is the account executive for the ad agency that places a great majority of the commercials on this radio station. 
It is Carl who speaks. Well, Julia, things have come to a pretty pass, haven't they? Ah, uh, more coffee, Carl? No, Julia, not just yet. There are a few things I have to say first. Things that have needed saying for a long, long time. Of course, Carl, as you wish. Julia, you surprise me. All right, Carl. Boo! There, how was that? No, it didn't work, Julia. I wasn't surprised hardly at all. You'll have to do something really different. Something I'd never expect, if you really want to surprise me. Well, I... I know. What's that, Julia? Close your eyes, Carl. But, Julia, what... That, that's it, Carl. Now, don't open them until I tell you. All right, Carl. Open them. <gasps> Julia! Surprised this time, Carl? I don't know yet, Julia. I can't get my eyes open. Well, what's going to happen next time? Don't fail to miss our next exciting episode when we'll hear Carl say... I can't see the script, Julia. You'd better go on alone. You remember last time, Carl Morgan was sentenced to life imprisonment without possibility of parole for disorderly conduct. Today, we join Carl during his first day in the state penitentiary. It is Carl's cellmate, Lefty Friendman, who speaks. Let's listen. Hey, did you hear Eddie Northcott escape last night? How'd he do it? His mother sent him an apricot pie. So? Apricot pie always makes him break out. Hey, I hear we're not going to have cake for dessert tonight. Why not? The cook beat the batter too much and lost his mind. You mean? That's right. He went stir crazy. Oh, stop it, stop it. I can't stand it. I can't stay in here doing prison jokes for the rest of my life. I've got to get out. Guard, guard. All right, all right. Hold on there. What's all the yelling going on here? Shut your mouth. What do you want? I'm going out of my mind. You've got to let me out of here. I didn't do it. You didn't? No. Well, then you shouldn't be in jail. I should let you out. Right. Okay. There you are. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Goodbye. Bye. Well, what's going to happen next time? Don't fail to miss our next exciting episode when we'll hear Carl's former cellmate, Lefty Friendman, say... Hey, what's the difference between a warden and a battleship? I say, uh, what's the difference between a... Oh, uh, that's right, he, he's gone. Scotty Waddy Dum Dum Dee Dee Dwada Do Do Scotty Waddy Dee Dee Do <laughs> You remember last time? Carl finally met the Hollywood producer, Cy Baby, preparatory to Carl's becoming the star of the musical prison picture, The Sing, Sing, Sing. It is now several days later, and Carl Morgan, at the suggestion of Mr. Baby, is in the workshop of Dmitry Koromachek, the noted teacher of method acting, for his first day of dramatic lessons. Let's listen. <laughs> it sure is hot out today, ain't it? Sure is. Must be 112 in the shade. How long you figure it'll be before we gets to Clamens Junction? Dunno. Gotta be there before Craig arrives with a gold shipment, though. Yeah. Say, you know... What's that? I think we got the wrong scripts here. What do you mean? They were right on the top of the stack where they always are in Helen's office. Oh, didn't you see the memo? Huh? The return to paper plates office is in room 106 now, man. These are scripts from some other well, show. Well, how was I supposed to know? Well, if you'd stick around once in a while after work instead of just... Oh, goof... don't give me that stuff, man. You're always the first one out of the door every day, and you know yeah, it. Yeah, but it's your responsibility to pick up the scripts, not mine. Oh, come on. Come off it, will you? I'll come I off you... on nothing. You're the one who's all... Mm. Well... What's going to happen next time? Don't fail to miss our next exciting episode when we'll hear Carl say... I'm not kidding. I just as soon punch your face in as look at you. Oh, yeah? You remember last time. 
Carl Morgan met beautiful Hollywood singing starlet Miss Sum Looker at a big Hollywood party, and it was love at first sight. It is now a few moments later at the same party as Carl and Sum try to get to know each other better by the hors d'oeuvre table. Let's listen. Sum, uh, I'd like to get to know you better. And I'd like to get to know you better, Carl. Do you mind if I ask you some personal questions, Sum? No, Carl, I, I don't mind. Well, then, what's the capital of New York? I don't know. It's Albany. Albany? That's right. And what's the fifth tallest building in the world? I don't know. It's the Chrysler Building. The Chrysler Building. That's right. Oh, Carl, uh, do you mind if I ask you some personal questions? Not at all. What's the capital of New York? I don't know. It's Albany. Albany. That's right. And what's the fifth tallest building in the world? The Chrysler Building? No. No? No. Albany? That's right. Oh, some. Well, what's going to happen next time? Don't fail to miss the next exciting episode when we hear Carl say... How many times more sheep than people are there in Australia? Remember last time, Carl was horrified to find that someone had removed the nap from his knapsack, thus creating further hardships for himself, Julia, and Fred C. Dobbs as they searched for the lost Dutchman gold mine in the mountains of Brazil. Now, a short time later, a still confused Carl continues his trek with the others. Let's listen. I can't understand it, Julia. What's that, Carl? What can't you understand? Well, among other things, Julia, Einstein's theory of relativity. Oh, that's simple, Carl. It's E equals MC squared. That's not the theory of relativity, Julia. That's the formula for nuclear energy. It is? Yes, I'm afraid so. Well, if we have the formula, why don't we make some, Carl? It's already been done. And besides, we don't have any test tubes. I suppose you're right. Come, let's continue our track. I don't get it, Julia. What's that, Carl? What don't you get? The New York Times anymore. Why? Oh, I don't have any time to read it, so I canceled my subscription. Good thinking on your part, Carl. Uh, come, let's continue our search. Right. It's really a puzzle, Julia. What's that, Carl? How to connect nine dots with four straight lines without removing your pencil from the paper. When you put it that way, Carl, I must agree with you. Come, let's continue Will on. Will you stop your babbling back there for a minute? Why? Yes, why? Why? Take a look down there at your feet. <gasps> well, what's going to happen next time? Don't fail to miss our next exciting episode when we hear Carl say... He's right, Julia. You're wearing my shoes and I'm wearing yours. That's next time on Return to Paper Plates, brought to you exclusively over WIBG.